greetings through the name which is above all other names, that of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son, God the Son. My name is Brian Mason, and this is part two of the Bible study, full of the Holy Ghost. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 6, and continuing at verse 3. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. What business? The business where there have been those murmurings from the Greek, Greek believers, the Grecians, over that they were perceiving that the Hebrew widows in some way were being more favoured than themselves. And the apostles were determined to deal with this and to remove any hindrance that there would be to what they were called to, the preaching of the word of God and of prayer. So, they spoke to the believers. And that's what they were. Wherefore, brethren, brethren are the believers. And can't be brethren if you're not a believer. You have to be one who is in Christ and Christ in you. Set apart for Christ. Set apart for the one who gave his life for you. When he says, I gave my life for you, what are you going to give me? Rather different to the false gospel, which centers upon the person, rather than centers upon God in Jesus Christ, centers upon what can I have? rather than what will you give me? Look ye out among you seven honest men. And they had to be. They had to be honest. They had to be trustworthy. They had to be those who God could use. They had to be those who were, knew that they had been washed and cleansed through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, who had been filled with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And their lives were wholly belonging to the Lord Jesus Christ. Would they have given their lives purely to a man? They could only give their lives to God. God the creator, God the sustainer. And they had to be full, not just partial. They had to be serious. They had to be overflowing. They had to mean business with God. They had to want to do what, what they were called to do and not be distracted. And they had to be men of wisdom. Not the earthly wisdom. Not that which is of the intellect and wants to, to consider everything through with the mind. They had to have the wisdom which comes from God himself. That's pure wisdom, true wisdom. Having the mind of Christ. 
and could only have the mind of Christ when you have God. Otherwise, it's just, just that which is in the natural. And the natural is not that which is of the wisdom of God, because he places man above God. How many movements of God started? Oh, they started well enough. The Apostolics, Elim, Assemblies of God, Salvation Army, just to name a few. Yes, oh, Methodism, I'm forgetting that one. Started well. But what happened? The natural came in. They went after, went after the natural ways. They went after another spirit. And what happened? The Holy Ghost was driven out. Because they were centering upon the intellectual. They were centering upon man's needs rather than ministering to God. They were ministering to people. The social gospel is not of God. Because God his rightful place. It does not let God come into into the situation does not give the life to God because it, it wants to give purely to others and cuts God out. And God has cut these movements out and left them to go their own ways. There has to be that turning back to him to know what the dynamism of God the supernatural manifestations of God. Instead of making out that God is purely in human terms, that God is no better than man. Jesus Christ, God the Son, Keep that in mind, because God will not be mocked. And what, coming back to, back to this, verse 4, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Those are the central requirements of any church. But many, as it were, have brushed them aside. have made them secondary. Even if they are secondary, they've done away with the Bible study. They've done away with the prayer meeting. And God has done away with them because it is Ichabod. Ichabod above the door. My glory has departed. Oh, in your own life, how much emphasis is given on the study of the Word of God. How much emphasis is placed on prayer. 
These are the fundamentals of the Christian life. And the apostles know this because they know without study of the word and they know without prayer, personal prayer, then they would soon stagnate. They would soon become dry. They would soon become powerless. And that is what Christianity in the main today is. It's stagnant. Stagnant. It's dry. It's powerless. It has a form of religion, but that's all it has. Because it has compromised. It has compromised with other religions, with other faiths. It has compromised the word of God. It has compromised and said, Jesus Christ is only a good man. God has spewed them out of his mouth. Oh, bless God, though. He still has his remnant. Are you in the remnant? Are you continuously waiting upon God moment by moment? you are, then you'll be in the Word. Then you'll be in the spirit of prayer. And you'll hear from God. And you'll know that even though you may be helpless, that you can ask Him. Lord, I know you saved me and I give my life, all of my life to you. I'm absolutely abandoned to whatever you want to do through this, your vessel. He will hear that prayer. And you will see him work on his own scale. Not the limited scale of man. The unlimited scale of God. And it was the dedication the consecration, the yieldedness of the apostles to the word of God and to prayer, that the church grew. But for it to grow, there had to be others who would come and carry the weight which was hindering the apostles because they were being drawn into other matters. The matters of serving at tables. Yes, there is a need for those who will serve at tables. Those who will serve God in whatever way he wants them to serve. And the saying pleased the whole multitude. That wonderful. There was unity there. There was no grumbling. No saying, oh, you, you were trying to be uh, better than us. No, no. There was a realization that God had a part for each one of them to play. Have you realized that you... God wants you to play your part, but not your part thinking, oh, I must do this, that, and the other. 
with knowing, waiting upon God until he shows you clearly what that part is. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost. That's interesting that it, those words were referring to Stephen. Then we have the other names mentioned. But Stephen, full of faith. Whatever Stephen's background may have been, he was a man who had yielded himself, had consecrated himself, had abandoned himself to God. And that he had been not just saved, he was a fully saved man. And he wasn't seeking that which would bring glory to himself. He wasn't wanting to stand out and receive the praise from others. Because and, cause whether it's praise or whether it's condemnation or whatever against, against you, it doesn't matter when we're what? Abandoned to God, it doesn't matter because neither praise nor condemnation against us means anything because we're dead to it. Only what God wants matters and everything else will not hinder Because we're centered upon him who gave his all for you. And here was Stephen. Yes, he was full of the Holy Ghost, all right. Because we will see this. We go and read through the rest of the chapter and continue in chapter 7. You will see that he is a man who is not timid. But he is a man who is absolutely on fire for God. And when there were those who come, came against him, he did not take a, a backward step because it was the Holy Ghost and not himself who was speaking and acting through him. He was just a vessel in the hands of God, a vessel filled with God. And we have Philip mentioned. So that he was the Stephen and Philip amongst the seven. But it soon became evident that God had something more for Stephen and for Philip. They were not purely ordinary men, they were extraordinary men. Are you extraordinary? Because God wants those who are extraordinary, who will do exploits for God. Because God is, is working in them and through them. And the powers of hell shake. They quake. There's great disturbances in the heavenly places. When there is that believing that God is at work. And God has found the vessel through whom he can work. Because there is that believing, not a believing in self, not a believing in the natural and the intellectual, 
the believing in the Spirit, the power of the Spirit, being let loose through the authority of preaching on the Word of God, through the authority of praying based on the Word of God, praying in the Holy Ghost, on the victory of the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Son. That's why there's weakness. Because Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ, is not given his rightful place. He has made an open show of principalities and powers of darkness. He has utterly and completely defeated them. Then we have these others' names mentioned. Undoubtedly these were ones who enabled the apostles to get on with their preaching of the word and praying. Men who God used in those days, men who were faithful to God, men who were given to God. We may not hear anything more about them, but yet they, day by day, would quietly go about what God had called them to do. And who were they? Prochorus and Nicanor and Timon, and Perinus, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. Yes, there were those who were needed to stand in whatever way God calls them to stand behind the ones who are called to preach. And in these days where there's a great dearth of the word of God, a great famine of the word of God, it is the Holy Ghost that is needed. A Holy Ghost filling vessels which know that in themselves they are nothing and nobody. Filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. And we see, we will see, that in the scriptures, both Stephen, the first martyr, absolutely on fire with the Holy Ghost, and Philip, where he went, Philip, what happened? There was revival, there were moves of God's Spirit. Yes, wherever he went, God worked. God moved. God caused conviction of sins. And God brought through Philip that wonderful, wonderful conversion of the Ethiopian eunuch. To be able to go back to where he had come from, having received the light of the Holy Ghost upon the Scriptures, and he would have a message, the message of the Messiah, the message of God the Son. And these men, whom they set before the apostles. And when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them. The seven men set apart for God, a special work for God. And they were prayed for. And scripturally, 
the hands were laid upon them as an acknowledgement that they had been called by God for this task. They had been set apart by God and that they would go with all the authority and with all the power of God in them and through them men who would go day by day serving in the tasks which God had called them to and with two of them Stephen and Philip they will go with all the boldness all the boldness take note and all the authority which the Holy Ghost gives to those whom God has, has given, empowered as it were. Not anything there which is purely in the ordinary, but in the extraordinary. And the extraordinary working through man is not for the glory of man, not for the praise of man. It is purely for the glory of God. O God, our Father, thank Thee that in these days the Holy Ghost is still being sent into the lives of those who will come and seek the baptism in the Holy Ghost and with fire. Not that which is to be for man's praise, but purely to be filled with all the fullness of God. That in these days, the very devil and his cohort will be put to flight and your plan and purpose shall be fulfilled as every interference in human affairs one by one are pulled down and destroyed anything interference by the very devil himself and that father you shall be glorified through the Son and the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Son, shall return at the precise moment that you want him to return because this is based on the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you. So I'm abiding. And I'm expecting that this shall be done for your glory. Amen.